All right, good evening, everybody. You're welcome to our class, Python programming class this evening. My name is Uchino Michael Abadi. Um, this evening, we're going to be looking at a few topics. We're going to be looking at the Python constants, and we're going to be looking at Python data types. Before I go now, just um, cast our minds back to where we stopped the last time, or the few topics we looked at the last time. In our last lesson, we looked at the Python. We looked at the Python statements. In the last class, Python statements. Okay. We also looked at consider another topic. Last in the last class, Python comments. Okay. We also considered um, the Python variable. That was in our last class. Python variables. Okay, so, and we, in looking at the Python statements, we talked about a few statements. We listed out and considered the assignment statements. We also considered the if statements, if conditional statements the four statements, the print statements, and the host of other statements. We could not exhaust all, but in the course of the program, we are going to be coming across many of the statements. And also from there, we consider Python comments. <coughs> Excuse me. So Python comments, and I explained to us that the Python comments are very important in writing codes. And few features of the Python comments is that Number one, they're very important. And secondly, Python comments are not part of the codes. And then Python comments are meant to give us a lead or a guide as to what is happening in the code. And Python comments should be able to clearly define every section of a line of code. That is the, 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 the feature of a, Python, of a Python comment, of a comment, okay? then we're able to write few of this comment and then we say that Python comments always begins with an ash sign okay it begins with an ash sign like in other programming languages you have a way of presenting the comments you can use the forward slash and ash and star in, on both ends of the of the comment but in this case just begin with an ash sign by your left side by the left before writing your comments so that is just, these are just the basic features and general features of the python comments there's nothing much or too technical about it but you need to know the importance of a python comments and also we looked at the python variables and we said variables are store of values and you have the variable you have the values in which you store in the variable and we are we are also explained to us that variables can actually change in value for instance you can have name to be equals to Samuel okay sorry okay you can have name to be equals to Samuel you can still have name that same name being equals to another value another variable you can say equals to equals to Jonathan equals to Jonathan so now you have this okay so I can set to print this print name twice okay print name and then I can set to print name as well but mind you I make a reference to the same variable name okay I run my code and I should expect two variable two values attached assigned to that same variable name so you can see that variables can have changed values okay that is this is one major feature of a variable can have changing values difference in values okay so within the within the same code you can have a variable name you know changing to a different value or having a, a you know a value reassignment okay so just bear it in mind 
that the value of a variable can actually change. All right. So now going straight to the topic we're looking at today, we're looking at the first thing we're looking at is the Python constants. Okay. We're going to look at the Python constants. Today we're going to look at the Python constants. That should be comments. I should make these a comment, okay? So we're gonna look at the Python constant, we're gonna look at the Python that's type. Python that's type. In the next few minutes we'll just use a the next few minutes to look at this. Python that's a type. So these are the two things we're gonna look at in this lesson today. So straight up I'm gonna we're going to consider the first thing there, Python constant. What are Python constants? As the name implies, constants are fixed. Okay, constants are fixed values that cannot change. And in writing a program, once a constant has been declared, the value of the constant remains the same anywhere in that program. Unlike the variable where you can have a reassignment of value to a variable, in the case of a constant, the value of a constant remains the same all through the program. It cannot change. Yes. So now we have um, we have inbuilt constants. Maybe in the course of your installing the, the Python to into your system or downloading your IDE. In the course of doing that, automatically you are installing, you ought to have installed libraries some libraries concerning containing constants okay so you also have installed some libraries containing constants so these are inbuilt constants that could be used okay that could be used while you are running your program for instance if i want to call out a constant an inbuilt constant i'm going to import one of the ways you can actually use a constant in python is by importing importing the pipe the, the constants okay i can say for instance i can say import maths maths okay so if i'm importing maths then i'm going to be importing all the features everything about maths okay good so now i can say for instance some um, print print by Okay. I can ask my system to print by as long as maths have been imported okay print by but I didn't make reference to the module name so I'm going to include my module name there maths dot print by I'm expecting the value of my pi to be printed so so you can see the value of pi 3.1415926 and all that so I was able to get this because of my import math. I imported maths. I imported this constant module. Let me delete it and still run the code and see what happens again. I'm going to run this code. It's giving me an error. No matter what I do, what's the error line five? Print math.py dot pi. Name error. Name math is not defined. The very simple reason is because there is no reference to any module. So I still have to go back to import that. Okay, to import this to be able to assess every necessary features of that module. Okay, so now with this, if I run my code again, I should have a correct figure. Very good. So now I can also print anything I want to do. I can say, I can say cal, for instance, cal is equal to any calculation I want to do that has a few, that has some of the features of that module. Okay, that has a constant. For instance, you have your your angular, you know, degrees in you know your angles and degrees. These are actually constant. Ninety degrees, forty-five degrees, and the rest of them. Your sine, your cosine, and the rest of the trig trigonometric trigonometric ratio and all that. These are constants, clearly defined constant. For instance, you can say cal is equals to is equals to um, cal is equals to Maths, maths dot, okay, math dot sign ninety, okay, maths dot sign ninety divided by two, okay. All right, 
90 divided by 2. So it's just like saying sine 90 divided by 2. I'm going to say print cal. Cal is my variable. I decided to use that as my variable cal, print cal. So it should give me this expression max dot. So what I did here, this is what is happening there. First thing is that I've imported my math module. Right? So it is an inbuilt module into my Python. So because I've imported this, I will have the privilege of accessing all the mathematical features inside this module. So in the first instance, I'm able to get the value of pi, which is clearly written down here because I have imported this module, the constant module. And a module, you shouldn't see that as a very strange word is simply a file a module is a file and is a file containing you know mathematical features containing not just mathematical features containing any value at all value definition it could be a file containing codes written codes by others you can import and make use of these codes so that's what a module is a module is just a file it's not something perfect it's not something too difficult to understand it's just a file Anybody can form a file and then create some codes inside the file, save them and embed them within the Python. So that's what is happening here. So in this case, we're looking at math module. In the math module, we have all the mathematical features and values, constants inside the math module. I've made use of the first one. I have the value here. So now I'm coming to the second one and I say, Carl, I was the one that chose this and I say equals to math. Math is my imported module math dots 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 after the dots i'm referencing what's inside the math sign is inside the math sign 90 divided by 2. okay so let me go ahead and print this and see what happens good so now sign 90 divided by 2 is going to give me 0 0.44 and so on so i'm um, simply these figures I don't have any of these figures here, but I'm actually drawing from the features inside the math module. So this is what we'll call is a very good example of a Python constant. Okay, so this constant cannot change any time, any day. It cannot change. Okay, so if I do the same thing, it will still give me the same value. Pi, the value of pi, the, the value of pi remains the same, and the value of sine 90 remains the same. <coughs> Okay, so if you want to get the full value of sine sin 90, you can actually multiply this by 2 to give you the real value of sine 90. So this is just it about the, the inbuilt constant. Now, the second thing we're going to look at is the other type of constant. It is called the user-defined constant. User-defined constant. It simply means that you, as a coder, can also... You can create a constant, you can create a module, a module that contains constants, you can create them and use them while you're writing codes. We're going to do that practically now. We're going to do that. So I'll just delete, I want to delete this file. I want to delete this file, please. I want to delete so we can recreate it. I want us to have a practical session here. Okay, now. I want to go practically step by step. Let's see how we can create a module. To create a module, it's just a very simple way, just like creating a file. So to create a module, we we'll just go ahead and open a file. Open a new file, a new file. Yes, and name the file. I want to name it constant. Constant. But the last time I told you, if you want to name a file, there must be an extension at the end of that file. And that extension is a extension that is recognized by Python, okay, by the Python program. So the extension is .py. Without this extension, you cannot run this file in within this environment. So that is why we're including the extension. Without it, you cannot run. So you notice that you, the moment you introduce .py and you save it, this symbol, Python symbol, will appear. By, by, by that file, like this ones we have here, you can see a calculator.py, then you can see the symbol, you can see the symbol for my main.py, same thing is going to happen here, because I introduced a, a .py here, I'm going to have that, okay, let me just say, let me, let me remove the extension and see what happens, I remove the extension, okay, and save the file, 
okay so now it's asking me to register this file okay it's asking me to specify an extension for this file there's no specified extension so what you're seeing here are all types of extension but i have not specified any so that is why it's asking me what extension do you want okay so you must specify the extension for the file that you want okay you must specify so i didn't specify you can see what's happening there there's a question mark on it it's still expecting me to specify so i'll just go ahead i can see a python here a python logo here i'll just click on it okay i'll just click on it but yet the process of saving is not actually the right process that's why it's not going well and here it is here it's here but you cannot see this symbol attached to the constant i'll just go ahead to delete that or let me just write a code if i write a code on this it's not going to work okay let's try that and see i'm going to say um, name equals to name is equals to uh, samuel okay samuel name is equals to samuel i'll close my i'll close my parenthesis okay now i'll say print print name all right so let me run the code and see what happens okay so nothing happens the outcome i was expecting to give me some but some is not printed out why because it cannot be executed in this environment because there was no the pi extension there's no the pi extension there so it cannot be executed on that environment so i'll just go ahead to delete this and re and reopen it again okay i'll delete that i'll delete it then i'm going to open a new one okay good so now sorry sorry i want to delete it okay delete please what's happening okay okay all right so let me go ahead and open a new file a python file that is where we're going to create our module they call it constant dot py constant dot py and save it now i have my constant of py okay so in my constant of py i'm going to whatever i'm writing in this in this file or in this module will be a constant i want to use that as a constant okay so i can say length length equals to length equals to 30 Okay, height is equals to 20. Okay, breadth. Okay, breadth equals to equals to 10. All right. So now, in this module, this is what is contained. These are my constants: length 30 height this breadth this i can add any other thing whatever i want to add i can add okay i can add whatever i want to add in there but let me leave this for the way it is for now now i'll go to my main dot file i'm now in my main dot file and the main dot is where i write my codes okay this is where i write my codes so here i'm going to do a little calculation but i'll make reference to my constants but i want to use my constants all right i want to use my constants so i can simply say dimension dimension equals to okay but before i do this since i want to use my constants sorry i was supposed to import i will just quickly import it please let me import my constant import import constant now the constant i'm importing if you remember very well 
when I was talking about the inbuilt constants, I imported maths. That was inbuilt. Now, in this case, I'm importing constants, but this is not inbuilt. This is user defined. I defined it myself. I created this because I'd apply myself, and now I'm trying to import something from the from my created file constant of pi so that's why i'm using the import constant and as you can see python recognizes that so it's part of the you know the mode of brand the mode of operation in python so now i'm going to say dimension dimension for instance i'm doing dimension of something dimension is equal to length height breadth okay sorry it's supposed to let me i'm going to call i'm going to call before i reference because i'm going to call the module before I reference to the, to the to the dimension I'm talking about. So the module I'm working with is constant. So I'm going to call the constants constant. With this constant, Python recognizes that yes, I'm talking about the constant of pi file. It's just like saying now get something from the constant of pi file. Now constant I'll put the dots now the door to tell me what I need for that file. I need the length. Okay. I need the length. Now I want to multiply my length times the breadth. Length in Python, the multiplication sign is the exteris. Now constant dot length has given me the length for the constant file. Now I'm going to get the breadth from the constant file. I'll still write constant dot breadth. Okay, I have my breadth there already. The breadth, so I have it there. Okay, so I want to get the dimension. I will quickly print dimension. I will just go go ahead and print dimension. Mind you, I'm using my user defined module okay now i'm done with what i want to do i just wanted to get the dimension of anything and dimension is constant dot length times constant dot breadth and i explained to you that this constant here makes reference to the constant file we open together and the length here makes reference to the content of the constant in the constant file okay so now same thing applies here constant dot breadth the breadth in the constant file so let me just go ahead and run this. You can see I'm doing a calculation without any number. There's no number here, but I'm going to have a value. Good. So now, this is our outcome. Our outcome is 300. Okay, so constant of length times constant of breadth is giving us what? 300. And if I go to my constant file to know what happened there, length times the breadth is 30 times 10. 30 times 10 is giving us 300 so obviously our calculation is correct okay so you can see that this is how to use a constant i can use this in any way and any part of this program but the beautiful thing about the constant is that it makes your program to be organized and if you look at this program i don't have to start writing uh i don't have to come and start writing uh, length equals to 30 you know then i write uh, breadth is equal to uh, 20 or anything. Okay, you don't have to do all this. Then I say uh, breadth times this. No, I don't have to do that. There, there's a clear reference from another file. So it makes my program very simple and very neat. You can see the line, but and yet I have my outcome here. So that's the beauty of using your constant. So you can actually create your constant, your, your constant or you can also use the you know the the, the input constants okay the input constants yes so i think that's going to be all for constant python constants today this evening and quickly we're going to look at the next thing in our class this evening we're going to look at the python data types python data types so i'll just go ahead and clean this I will, I will not clean, I will just clean this and I will take this off because this is gone. Okay, so now we are looking at the Python data types and there are, oh, we need to, we need to have a good understanding of the types of 
the data types we have in Python program. Okay, so we have the various data types in Python program. We have the, the integers and the fluids. I briefly mentioned this in either in our last class or in a previous class I mentioned this. We have the integer and we have the flute. And the integer talks about whole numbers. Okay. Integer. Okay. Talks about whole numbers. Okay. Alright, so then we have the floating point numbers. Floating points numbers. Okay. This talks about okay, this talks about decimal numbers. Decimal numbers. So when you talk about the integers, you're talking about the whole numbers and when we talk about the the floating point numbers, we are talking about decimal numbers. Alright, so um, you can also do you can also do a check. For instance, you have your x, you have your x to be equal to don't mind me, I love x very well. You have your x to be equal to eight, and then x is very popular though. X to be equals to eight, and you have your y. Y is the next popular the next popular variable. Okay, y to be equals to six point two three. Okay. Now, if you're asking, uh, you can say print. Okay, I can just say. Okay. I can say seek for instance. Seek is equals to seek the type. Okay, type x. Okay, and seek two. Type Y. I want to know the the class. Okay, those two belong to. So I'll just print them out. Print. Print sick. Sorry. Print. Also prints six, six, okay. So what I'm trying, I was trying to do here, I just um, declare the statement here: x equals to eight and y is equals to six point two three. And I just use seek because I want to know the data type. We're looking at Python data types. I want to know the data type. This is and this is as well. Okay. So in my explanation, I made us understand that x here is a whole number, and whole numbers are called integers in Python program. And then um, the decimal numbers are called the, are the floating point numbers or flutes. You call them the flutes. So I'm trying to find out the data type this is. So I'll just run this code. If you look at it very well, I said seek equals to type. The type here is the data type. Okay, type x. What type is x and what type is y? Okay, so it's going to tell me that x is it belongs to the class inter integer, and um, y belongs to the class float. So it's a floating point number. The other one is an integer. So it is clearly you know defined and specified there. So you should be able to know the that various types of you know uh, of the data types that you use. Okay, in use, you should be able to know all this. All right. Good. So now, also apart from this, we are going to. I think I, I want to put the. I, I think this is just the basic you need to know about this. Apart from this, we have <coughs> among among the data types. You you have we have the complex numbers. Okay, we have the complex numbers as well. Okay, complex numbers. It's also one of the data types. Or one of the Python number system. 
we have the complex numbers. The complex numbers are numbers that contains the you know the whole number part and also the imaginary part. Okay, numbers that contains the whole number part and the imaginary part. The example of a complex number. A good example of a co complex number is number that h equals to uh, three plus plus five i. Okay, three plus five i. Okay, so the, the this is a very good example of a complex number. And the three here is the whole number part, and the five i is the imaginary number part. So complex numbers contain a whole number part and an imaginary number. Okay, for instance, you have a very you know long, huge number you want to write, and you don't know how to present it. You can just use the letter to represent the huge number okay so that's later you use as an imaginary that is what when you see it you know that yes this represent that huge number so that is what this talks about so this is a complex number and these are the three you know major type of numbers you can actually find in your python program and you need to understand them get used to them and also the other thing we're going to look at there is the python list the python list is another data type that is you need to also understand you need to study it very well the the python list study it very well and understand the workings of the python list so the python list the features of the python list python lists are a list of the sort you have i can say list equals to number one python lists are written in square brackets okay and python list are is a set of ordered items set of ordered items you can have three six nine you can still have you can still have a string inside okay you can have a string inside blue okay so you can have anything inside from ten and the rest so this is a good example of a python list okay it's a good example of a Python list. So if I want to know the type here, and I say, I say seek, I'm still using seek again. Seek is equals to type. I want to know the type of this. Okay. Type in bracket, I'll say list. Okay. My list. Then I print, I'll print seek. Print. Okay, let me see what my outcome will be. Okay, well you can see class. Class is list. Okay, but this is a Python list belonging to the class list. We've looked at the other ones, and those ones belong to the class integer and to the class um, floats. Okay, so here we have this belonging to the class list. Okay, so. These are a good example of your Python list. And I'm going to explain a few things I explained before. I'm going to call back your mind to what we explained before. The how the you know the Python list, you know, the, the makeup of the Python list and how we can actually access items from the Python list. Now the Python list is actually like the name implies the list of items enclosed by square bracket. And we can see the list of items inside these items are not, are not are not just restricted they must not be just numbers you can have strings inside the blue you're seeing is a string okay it's a string and then you have integers and it's not just we mustn't just have whole numbers integers you can see have floating point numbers like 2.8 or whatsoever inside your your list okay so you can now the, the list the your, your python list is very flexible because you can do a lot of operations in your python list you can change whatever you want to change but before i go on to say that i want you to understand that there is we have what we call the index operation in the python list and every known by is assigned every item let me not use just number every item is assigned an index in the python list now the index you know the number flows in two ways we have the negative in index and then we have the positive index in the python list 
Now, for the for the negative index, it flowed from the right side to the left mm -hmm. side, meaning that the 2.8 is going to come from 2.8. 2.8 is minus 1, okay? Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. So it's flowing from your right to your left. But for the positive numbers, it's going from 0 from your left towards your right side. So your 3 here is going to be 0 index. The index of 3 is 0. The index of 6 is 1. The index of 9 is 2. The index of blue, blue, okay, is 3. The index of 10 is 4. The index of 2.8 is 5. So everything has an index. So with the index, the beautiful thing is that the index actually helps you to be able to change the value of that number. For instance, I can say, I can say, um, least, okay, least in square bracket, okay, zero, okay, least in square bracket zero will be equals to will be equals to I want to change it with a string I want to use equals to boy okay equals to boy and I say print list print list so I'm printing list now I'll, I'll be expecting a new list to be created meaning what the number you're seeing here is actually the index of three index zero I told you that when you're going from the left to the right the first number is index zero the second number is index one the third number is index two that's how it progresses so i'm going to change this number three to a string boy okay print list if i'm printing this now i should have the outcome printed out in my console so i'll just click on that so we have a new list created okay a new list has been created all right, so we can see that we have created a new list. Good. So what we just did, we just changed that value. Apart from that, I can add more items. Okay, I can add more items. Okay, I can simply say list dot append. Okay, list dot append. Okay, so append whatever I want. Okay, I'm gonna append whatever I want. So list that append it. Okay, so I just there as a print list. Print list. So I should expect another eight to be added to the other eight. Good. So we have two point eight. Then we have eight. You can see here we have two point eight. That was the last. Uh, flutes we have there, but now another eight has been added. This eight is the eight we just appended to that list. So there are so many list operations we can do. Okay, and you can you can also print out set of numbers in a list. That's what we call the the object slide slicing in a list. That's what we call the object slicing.
all right so like i said um you have your list there so another thing we can also do is the slicing we can also slice our with object slicing you can actually print out a particular section of your of your list a particular section of your list using the object slicing method okay you can say print you can say print okay print um have that there you said zero oh, sorry there should be a list there print list list then you have a square bracket inside zero column zero column column four okay so let me run the program I expect something good so now you can see a section of the list has been printed out that is what it simply means and I'm gonna explain that let's see what happens there what happened there I said print list but then inside the print argument I included a square parenthesis and specifying where the the, the start points of the index and then the stop point of the index and I say start from zero and go all the way to but not including four because in Python program the last index specified is not always included so we're going to go back and count it and see from zero zero is three sorry I'm going to go have modified the list so I'm going to come here zero is boy okay boy okay one is six two is nine three is blue four is ten not including not including four so ten will not be printed at all why we had it from boy to blue so that's what we have here boy six nine and blue so these are the few modi modifications we can make on our python list okay these are the few modifications we can make on our Python list there so there could be there, there are others as well we have the add we have uh, the remove and all that so but these are the major modifications we can actually make on our on our Python list so now um, from here we're going to go straight to the Python tuple okay the Python tuple the Python tuple is similar to the Python list but there are still few you know differences you can actually spot out from there you can say list you can say uh, tup equals to equals to this 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 you can see have your they you have your string inside kind of string So that's what you have there in the top of. Okay, good. So now, if you don't look closely, you might not really be able to tell the difference between the Python tuple and the Python list. Now, in the Python list, items we are enclosed. The illustration I gave you, we enclose items in a square bracket. But in the Python tuple. We're using a parenthesis here so we have top equals top tup equals to this if i want to know the type of this i will just say um i can see if i seek again equals to type okay type and bracket tup tup okay and i'll print my seek i want to know the the class of that i'll print my seek Okay, it's going to tell me class is tuple. Good. So class here is what tuple. So this is a very good example of tuple because uh, this is because it's actually enclosed in a parenthesis. If I change it to a square bracket now, if I change it to a square, and I decide to print this again, it changes to a list. You can see 
changes to a list so i'll go back and take it back to the bracket so you can see the clear difference there that the difference between a list and a tuple is one of the reasons that what a list is enclosed by a square bracket and a tuple is, in, is enclosed by the parentheses okay so we have the seek and all that we're able to find out that this the class of this type on this data type is what is tuple all right good so we can do few we can go over the same processes we adopted in assessing items in the list but most of the the process will might not work okay most of the items might not work the reason is because the tuple is not like the list for instance if i, I try to change um, this item the first item there you you have this you have the three you have the seven you have that and all that i told you that in the list you have index operation same thing happens here as well okay so i can actually have tup I can actually have TOP um, so if I can use zero here okay equals to maybe let me say I want to change this with something else maybe I want to change it with a name Paul okay okay then I say print TUP print TUP okay it's going to give us an error all right it's going to give us an error uh, the reason is because it's just a tuple so tuples does not support item assignments okay i was trying to assign this to this to change it but tuples do not accept item assignments okay so what i can i can say tup dot Okay, append Lagos. Okay, so I'm print this. If I print this. Sorry, sorry, I made a mistake with this append. It's not append, it's append. Not append. Okay, now I'll just go ahead and run that again. Good. You see, attribute topo object has no attribute append. But if you recall very well, we use the append to add items to a list okay but in this case we cannot add append we cannot assign items to a tuple object but what we can do is that we can print out objects okay we can you can use the object slicing to print out objects from the tuple okay we can actually print out objects for instance we can say print tuple then the square brackets we use a slide slide zero okay let me see this time around say one two one two three okay print one two three then i'll go it's going to give me seven and nine okay seven and nine so tuple objects accepts okay accepts you know object slicing because this is object slicing so the first uh, index here, the first index here is 7 because 3 is 0 index. So 7 is the first. Then the next, after 1, you have 2, which is 9. The next is ball, which is 3. But it doesn't go up to the last, to the third. This particular uh, index is not honored. So it goes 1, 2, excluding 3. So that is why ball was not printed out. We have seven and nine printed apart from that you can still print you can print the entire list if you want to you can print the entire list you can say print tup to give you the entire list okay good then you can also you can also print i know any single you can print zero sorry tup print tup you printed it single item from the list okay tup then the square bracket you can just write three to give you three will give you the ball okay so if you print this to give you the ball okay so you can actually access items you can use the, the object slicing tool on the top of what 
you cannot make amends amendments you cannot substitute you cannot append in the tuple okay so tuple is very good when you're designing things for security reasons okay when you're designing codes security codes tuples are very very good and very very important because you don't want your codes to be broken through or broken into anyhow that is why we use tuples because most times it's difficult for you to you know break into codes and do all that that is why tuples are all often very very good when you're designing things for security reason yes that's the importance of tuple so aside tuple we also have another python data type we have the python strings the python string is another data type we have the python another python data type we have is a python string okay so python strings okay as much as possible i want to give you a very clear and in-depth explanation of this particular you know uh, topic this particular item on this list python strings uh, so python string the python string is actually a, a, a combination of characters okay a combination of characters a python string is divided into characters and uh, the whole string okay characters a collection of characters or words as you may call it words so words you agree with me that words are made up of characters so a python string could be character for instance you can have in quotes a string you can say string or oh, let me say oh, sorry sorry this is my okay so you can say character call it char equals to this is a good example of a python string okay character is a python string then also you have word okay in short form word okay it's also a python string word like Lagos is a python string now python strings could either be in single quotes okay python string could be written in single quotes they could be written in double quotes or they could be written in triple quotes Okay, this is very important for you to understand Python strings. Okay, could be written. Okay, Python strings. Strings could be written in single quotes. using any of this it's allowed but but for the triple quotes triple quotes it's used for what we call the uh, the triple quote is used for multi-line comments okay multi-line comments that's where we use our triple quotes basically but it's also a string okay but basically in our coding it's advisable you use your single quotes or use your double quotes. In my own case, I'm used to double quoting. So that is it's just easy and it's just working for me. So in your own case, maybe single quote might just be okay for you. So single quotes is just okay. Alright, so single quotes are allowed, double quotes are allowed. But it's if you're going with double quotes, it's advisable you go with double quote or true. If you go with single quotes advisable, you go to with single quote or true. For instance, if I decide to change this one side of this double quote and the other side single quotes, it will give me an error. 
okay you can see the error sign there so if I decide to print that I should have an error print car for instance okay to give me an error message you see uh, the error you can see the arrow pointing to this syntax error here a wise can string literal so now you can have you can start with double quote and end with single quote so if you're going with double please make sure you go with double if you're going with single make sure you stick to single so now i've changed that if i run that code again it's going to give me my e okay my correct e it's telling you that the first one is wrong and this is right okay so that is just the basic thing about your string okay so i think we've talked about a lot this evening we've talked about uh python constants before then i even went back a little bit to the python statements and comments and variables and there we jumped over to python constants i want to believe by now you should be able to uh to design to create a module for the for yourself and you should be able to use that module on any program why you to, to